seen a rat play basketball before. Excellent. Who's ever seen a rat before? Cool, let's take a look. Closer, Only one of you get this. This is my friend Chu. I gotta Chew. She does like to chew on stuff. Uh, she's a Japanese black hooded rat. Can you guys all see her? So this is who you guys are going to be cheering for. This is Chu. Um, she's called that because this breed of rat was developed in Japan. And you can see she's got this beautiful black hood uh, giving her her name. Do you think she here was born knowing how to play basketball? No. Where did you born knowing how to play basketball? Yes. Do any of you play basketball now? Excellent. And so what had to happen between when you were born and now? You learned. I'm going to put uh, Chu away to keep warming up, get ready for the game, and we're going to talk a little bit about how our rats learn and how we learn. Oh, Pika will come out later, it's okay. Uh, so, we've got different ways of learning things. What are some things you guys have ever learned? Yeah. What have you learned? You Push-ups, excellent, how about you? Rock? Basketball, excellent. How about you, Ohio? You've learned how to do jumping jacks while playing basketball. That's amazing. What have you learned? Push-ups? A lot of people doing sports-related things. Yeah. Cool. You? Jumping? You've learned jumping? So we you did jump to make a score. Now, there's a lot of things we learn. So, one of the primary ways we learn is by being taught. Who has ever gone to school or been taught something? Yeah. Someone says, this is how you do it, and they tell you. Now, we have difficulty communicating with our rats because they don't speak a whole lot of English, and I speak terrible rat. So it's very difficult for us to directly teach them things. But we've got other ways of learning as well. A lot of you guys mentioned playing sports or if you play a musical instrument and there's something you have to do every single day, which is practice, exactly. You repeat something over and over and over. Our rats practice playing basketball from when we get them at about six weeks old to um, they practice for about six months. And then once they're actually playing full games, they continue to practice every single day. So they are really, really good at what they do because they're always practicing. Now, yeah, that's why I've got my good projector here. Um, but how do they sort of figure it out in the first place? Well, there are things you guys have learned without anyone ever teaching you. How many people here have ever learned how to walk? Most of us will at some point learn how to walk. We've got a couple who are learning still. Um, who taught you how to walk? Nobody! Well, your mom might have helped a little bit, but did she sit you down one day and say, what's your name? Did she say, Will, my son, my beautiful boy, today we will turn, learn how to walk. You need to compress this muscle and relax that muscle and do kind of a this. Did that ever happen, Will? No! What you did is you saw some slightly taller people moving around on just two of their legs and you're like, that looks awesome, I gotta try that. And you got up and you took your first step and what happened then? You fell flat on your face. And did you give up walking as a bad job at that point? No. You got up again and you tried again. And you made little changes each time until eventually you were walking and you haven't really stopped since. Um, trial and error is another important way that we learn. You try things, you change them up, you try new things. And lastly, who here has ever learned to ride a bike? Did you just start on a bike and go and crash and fall over for the first time? Yes? I'm betting some of you guys had something to help you on your bike. Little training wheels, yeah? They keep you from falling over. And then when you got really good at staying up by yourself,
yourself, then you could learn the next thing. So you didn't have to learn every step at once. When we teach our rats, we break the basketball game down into steps. First we teach them that the ball is interesting. Then we teach them to pick up the ball. Eventually we teach them to put it in the basket. But rats aren't used to standing up like this. Although, of course, they can. So we give them a platform. We put it right here, they get up on the platform, and then they just have to push it in with their noses. Then they go lower and they stand up a little bit. And we lower the platform until they're making the full slam dunk. Every basket you see today will be a slam dunk, guys. But this leads us to the problem of how do we let the rats know that they're doing the right thing? And for this we use something called operant conditioning. Not the stuff in your hair. Uh, operant conditioning via something called positive reinforcement. And I would bet that you have all been conditioned at some point in your life. Here's what it means. Have you ever done something that somebody else wanted you to do? And did you then get a reward for doing that thing? And what did that make you want to do? Do it again. That is conditioning. If you've ever gotten a reward for bringing home a good grade on a report card, or doing all your chores on time, or just being super sweet, or if you've ever, I don't know, worked a nine to five job for years and years at a time and then brought home a paycheck, you have been conditioned to keep doing the thing. You keep doing the thing because you want the reward. We do the same thing with our rats. Every time they do the thing we're trying to get them to do, uh, in this case, make a basket, we will give them a reward. That's right, every time a rat makes a basket, we give that rat five bucks to spend on whatever they want. How about cheese? Cheese would actually be a much better reward than money because rats can't fiddle with small tender. Uh, and cheese is really good, all the cartoons say rats love it. But here's the problem with cheese, rats do love cheese, but it's very filling, very fattening. Uh, imagine if you were my basketball team and I said, every time you make a basket, I'm gonna give you a large cheese pizza to eat before you go make another basket. I want everyone to hold up their fingers right now with how many baskets they think they could make. I could make two. You could, you could eat 10 large cheese pizzas. Where would you put them? Later on we'll talk about conservation of mass. So we don't feed them cheese because it would fill them up and they wouldn't then get tired of playing. We feed them something else that they really, really, really love. These things, you might not have seen them before unless you train a lot of rats. You, you know what Cheerios are? Just right. And for that, we used this thing. 
Uh, this is a common household item, believe it or not. It is the ball from a tube of roll-on deodorant. We get these right from the factory, to my knowledge, they have never been in anybody's armpit. And we drill, as you can see, little tiny holes in it. You see these? See little holes? Little tiny holes. That gives the rats something to hold on to with their teeth. It's hard enough that they won't just chew it up, and but the holes give them something to grab onto. So, you guys ready to play? Yes! All right. I am going to need a volunteer. How about you, Batman? Actually, I'm going to need two volunteers. Your hand was up way early, Will. So, come on over here, guys. What's your name, Batman? Clinton? Sutton. That's a much better name. All right. So, Sutton, you are in charge of Pika, okay? Every time Pika makes a basket, I want you to push the score one button. Push it right now. There you go. And Will, every time Chu makes a basket over there, I want you to push the score two button. There you go. So let me start it so you can practice pushing the buttons. Pika made a basket, push the button. Push the button, there you go. And Chu made a basket, push the button. Excellent, you see? Their scores go right up there. Can you guys do this job? Are you ready? All right. <laughs> 